OversizedRadio.com presents... Andy, this gal is coming up here from the South. You say you ain't seen her since you were 17 years old? That's right, Amos. She coming up to New York mostly to invest the money her father done left her. Well, I sure hope she don't take no chances with it. Rinso presents the Amos and Andy Show. Yes, the makers of Rinso bring you the Amos and Andy Show with their guest tonight, Mr. Raymond Massey. Even as a youth, Andy must have left an indelible impression on the fair sex. A few days ago, he received a letter from a girl he knew when he was about 17 years old in which she said she was planning a visit to New York and hoped to renew their old friendship. At the moment, Andy is in his office with Amos, and he's recalling old times. Say, Andy, this gal, Muriel Davis, that's coming up here to you from a hometown here, uh, when you expect me here? Well, Amos, I ain't show. She write me to Zach Date in a day or so. Oh, uh, so you won't know when she's arriving until you get another letter from her? No. Uh, tell me, Andy, uh, you remember what kind of a gal she is? No, I don't remember her too good, Amos. Don't forget, I ain't seen her since I was 17. Man. And on top of that, uh, in those days, I was always running around with about 30 gals at the same time. Uh, 30 gals? You must have been some guy, all right. Oh, well, I was young then. Yeah. <laughs> now that I was older and settled down and got growed up ideas, I find that 15 is plenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you get along with so few, lover. Well, them was the good old days, though, when I was going around with Muriel. Uh -huh. I remember I used to buy a bag of gumdrops and go over to her house and we'd sit on the front porch. Oh, romantic stuff, huh? Yeah, then after a while, she'd go inside and turn off the porch light and we'd be in the dark. Uh, then what? I'd eat all the gumdrops. Oh, <laughs> oh Amos, I tell you, them was the days. Well, hello there, Amos. Uh, how are you? Hello, uh, hiya, King C. Uh, say, and uh, I'd like to speak to you private, confidential, and under your hat. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, well, another big business deal, I guess. Well, I'll be running along, fella. Yeah, see you later, Amos. Yeah, well, so long, folks. So long. What's up, Kingfish? Uh, Brother Ender, I got a big business deal I'm going to let you in on. Yeah, well, count me in, Kingfish. Look here, I know where I can sell a mess of furniture for $50. I is right with you. I know where I can buy the furniture for $25. I is your man. So all we got to do is to raise 25 Count me out. <laughs> Yeah, well, we went through that deal in a hurry, didn't we? Yeah, tell you the truth, Van, I didn't think it would work out myself. Forget about it. Yeah, say, Kingfish, what time is it? Uh, time, uh, yeah, it's about 4 o'clock p.m. Say, I got to get home and get some sleep. I've been up since noon. Oh. Yeah, all right, then. Uh, let's go. I'll walk with you. Come on. Yeah. You know, Kingfish, I think that the best hey, thing... Hey, Joe! Hey, Joe! Oh, uh, and that fella looking at us. Yeah. Hey, Joe, wait a second, will you? Yeah, uh, he's making a mistake. He thinks one of us is somebody named Joe, I guess. Yeah, what you want, buddy? Oh, uh, pardon me. I thought you was a pal of mine, a fella named Joe. Uh, who, me? Yeah, you look exactly like him. No, my name is Andrew H. Brown. There's my office right there. Well, my mistake. Gosh, you're a dead ringer for Joe. Sorry, boy. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, another fellow looked like you, huh, Anna? Yeah. Looked like nature and made the same mistake twice. Don't you? <laughs> I tell you, Joe, this fellow Andrew Bound that I'm running on the street looks exactly like you. You can't tell the difference. Well, I has heard of people's having doubles. I never knowed I had one, though. He even got a low voice like yours. Anyway, after he walked down the street, it hit me that we might have an angle there. You know, use him as a fall guy to take a rap for you or something. Mm -hmm. This is getting interesting. So what I done was I ducked in this office. The sap left the door open. Well, I start snooping around in there when the mailman shoves the letter under the slot. Go on. I opened the letter, and it's from a gal down south by the name of Muriel Davis that he ain't seen since he was 17. She coming up here to New York to invest some of the money her father done left her. 
I tell you, Joe, this is a perfect setup. Mm, getting better all the time. Uh, keep talking, Frank. Well, on top of everything else, she kind of sweet on this guy, Brown. So here's what I figure. She ain't seen him for over 20 years, so you could pass for this fella, Brown. Go up and see at the Harlem Plaza Hotel where she says she's stopping. Get lovey-dovey with her, grab the dough, we fades out and Brown takes the rap. Mm, Frank, I think you got something there. Uh, there ain't no chance of Brown coming up to work. No, I got this letter she writ right here with me. He ain't never gonna see it, so he won't even know she's in town. Well, there's, uh, one other thing, too. The police is still on our trails for that grocery store job we pulled. Uh, maybe we better lay low for a while. Don't be crazy. This is a cinch, Joe. Okay, Frank, I'll do it. Hey, Muriel, <laughs> this is just like old days. You know, Andy, this is the fourth date we had since I've been up here in Harlem. And there's still something about you that's a little different from the old Andy I knew. What's that, honey? Well, your looks haven't changed much. Maybe it's your voice. I don't know what it is. Well, a person bound to change a little after 20 years. Anyway, Andy, I can't tell you how happy I am that we are going to be married. Yeah, 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 me too. Uh, uh, by the way, that stock I was going to buy for you, did you draw the money from the bank yet? Yes, I got the $1,500 right here in my purse. There he is, darling. <laughs> fine, fine. I'll take it right along with me and invest it in that stock. Well, you ain't going already, it's your sweetheart. Uh, yeah, you're getting late, and, 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 and I got an early appointment. I'll call you tomorrow. Well, all right. But it's going to seem like a year till I see you again, darling. Well, it's going to seem longer than that to me. <laughs> Here's your hat, Andy. Uh, thanks, honey. Goodbye, dear. It's so long. That man's always whistling. <laughs> Well, then, how is everything getting along with you? Oh, boy, everything is fine. Yeah. I was just sitting here in the office thinking. Uh -huh. This is the first time since I can remember that I ain't had no worries or troubles. I... Wait a minute. Hello? Is this you, Andy? Mm, yeah, this is Andy. Who this? Well, your voice sounds different, Andy. I guess we must have a bad connection. This is Muriel. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Muriel who? Muriel who? Yeah. Only the girl you engaged to. Uh, uh, hold the phone for a second, will you? Amos, you remember me getting engaged to any girl named Muriel? <laughs> oh, no, Andy. What a man you is. <laughs> From now on, I'm going to keep a list of the gals I get engaged to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, say, that gal that you got the letter from was named Muriel Davis. You wasn't engaged to her, was you? Not that I know of. So. If I was, it sure been a long engagement, 20 years. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hello, is this Muriel Davis by any chance? Why, of course, Andy. I don't understand the way you was acting. Well, when did you get in town? Andy, is you out of your head? <clears throat> Tell me, did you buy that stock with that $1,500 I gave you last night? Fifteen hundred dollars. You ain't give me no money. I ain't seen you in 20 years. Andy Brown, you ain't gonna get away with this. I'm going to have you taken care of right away. Are you Andrew H. Brown? Well, 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 yeah, but yes, sir, yeah, but I ain't done nothing, officer, honest, I ain't. You call making love to a girl and swindling your out of $1,500 nothing? You're under arrest. Well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. That gal is crazy, miss. I didn't take no $1,500 from her. Wait a minute, officer. Save it, save it. You'll have plenty of chance to talk at the trial. Let's go, Romeo. Oh, come in, Kingfish. Yeah, come well, in. how is you, boy? All uh, right. Are we just sitting around here in the office requesting the trial? Yeah, that sure was a rough day in court, wasn't it? Yeah, the way the trial's going, fellas, things look bad for Andy, don't they? Yes, that testimony of Muriel Davis's that the prosecutor done read in court certainly make it look like Andy's been up there to see her, all right. Yeah, well, I can't figure the whole thing out. Andy said that he ain't seen the gal in 20 years. And the prosecutor claims that just a couple of weeks ago, he was up to see her four nights in a row. Yes, there seems to be a wide discrepancy there someplace. 
Yeah, he claims that uh, Andy proposed to her and then swindled out of $1,500. Well, I personally believe Andy. Boys, the newspaper show sure making a lot out of this case, though. As you've been reading it, they call it the Whistling Swindle Case. Yeah, how come they call it that? Well, it seems that when the case first broke, this Muriel Davis mentioned something to the newspaper men about Andy always whistling, uh, I'll get by, when he was with her. Oh, yes, I see. Tell me, how is Andy bearing up under all this? Is he worried? I say worried. He's just like a halibut waiting for Friday to blow over. <laughs> yes, well, that prosecutor is certainly making it tough for Andy. And they say he ain't lost a case in ten years. Yeah, well, we'll know the answer to everything tomorrow's session in court, all right. The trial ought to end up by then. Oh, yes, yes. They'll have a verdict to tomorrow sometime. Uh, tell me this, Kingfish. Uh, how do Andy's friends figure he's going to make out in the trial? Has you talked to a lot of them? Well, Amos, i uh, tell you this much. The betting around the pool room is ten to one that Andy ain't going to hear a wooden door slam for the next five years. <laughs> Expected. The court is being called to order as the judge wraps for silence. Could we, could we have quiet, please? In the case of the People versus Andrew H. Brown, the prosecution will please continue. Are you ready, Mr. Massey? Yes, Your Honor. Before recalling one of the defense's witnesses to the stand, I would like to review the evidence we have so far presented. As the court knows, Miss Muriel Davis was too ill to appear. Therefore, we introduced a photograph of the defendant, Andrew Brown, which Miss Davis, on her sick bed, positively identified as the man to whom she gave the $1,500. We also presented the testimony of three employees of the Harlem Plaza Hotel, who swore that the defendant is the man who, on four successive nights, called on Miss Davis in her hotel apartment. This scoundrel Brown... Objection sustained. Will the clerk strike that last sentence from the record? The last thing we presented was the written testimony of the victimized woman in the form of a deposition. In this, she vividly described the despicable methods employed by Andrew Brown in cold-bloodedly swindling her out of the $1,500. He made a promise of marriage which he never intended to keep. And now I would like to recall the defense's so-called character witness. Will Mr. George Kingfish Stevens take the stand? Uh, yeah, sir, yeah, sir. Just wait till I slip on my shoes, if you will. I didn't know you were going to call on me again. <laughs> will the witness please hurry? Uh, doing the best I can, Judge. Does the witness appreciate that he's in contempt of court? Uh, yes, appreciate it very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> will you please take the stand? Uh, yeah, sir, coming right up. Mr. Stevens, you will recall that you previously swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Oh, uh, that's right, yeah. Mr. Stevens. You told us earlier that in the many years you have known Andrew Brown, you've been in a great many business ventures together. Uh, yeah, sir. Me and Brown has done took a few flyers together, yeah. And he has always been honest in his business dealings? Yes, yeah, sir. He absolutely honest. Remember, Stevens, you're under oath? Uh, in that case, you better cross out the word absolutely there. <laughs> in other words, you mean that Andrew Brown is the type of man who could make ardent love to a woman and at the same time swindle her out of $1,500. Uh, no, sir. When that boy is making love, his mind ain't on swindling, but <laughs> Now, isn't it true that some six months ago, you and the defendant issued and sold stock in a company called the Consolidated Universal Investment Trust? Objection. Objection overruled. Answer the question, please. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, uh yeah, uh, we was in a deal, but, uh, only for a couple of days. Uh, it seemed like all of a sudden a man from the district attorney's office started buying the stock and we closed up fast. Yeah, so right there. Tell me, how much did you sell those shares for? Uh, well, now, as I recall it, uh, it was 50 cents a share, two for 89. That was the price. <laughs> I wonder if Wall Street ever thought of doing it that way. I don't know. Tell me, what were the assets in back of this stock? Uh, uh, you want to know uh, what the assets was? Uh, I don't nobody want to object to that question right here. <laughs> oh, then there were no assets behind that stock. Well, now, wait a minute, y'all saw, y'all saw, uh, we had assets, uh, 
Uh, yeah, sir. One of them was a, a big apartment house on Lenox Avenue. Remember? You're supposed to tell the truth. Yeah, sir. Well, it was more of a small apartment house. Uh, <laughs> the whole truth? Forget about the apartment house. You know. <laughs> All right. What were your assets then? Well, to tell you the truth, uh, I don't remember them offhand, but they was listed in the books. Oh, you kept books. Oh, yeah, sir. Yeah. Are those books available? Well, uh, I tell you a funny thing about them books. Uh, me and Brown was out on a fishing trip, and we had the books with us. Remember? You're under oath. Uh, forget about the fishing trip. Uh. <laughs> what about the books? Uh, what books? Uh, I thought so. Uh, say, is, is there any chance in me taking a whack at this thing without being under oath, Mr. <laughs> Gentlemen of the jury, intelligent men like you can see it's obvious that company had no assets. And it's equally obvious that fake stock deals are not exactly unknown to Mr. Brown. Oh, wait a minute, mister. I didn't say that. No. You said enough, Stevens. Come on, step down. Oh, yeah, sir. Get him down. Get him down. I get down. Right? Gentlemen of the jury, there goes your character witness. Now, the next witness I am going to call to the stand is the defendant, Andrew Brown. I intend to prove conclusively that proposing marriage and then extracting money from his victim is a common practice with this unprincipled scoundrel. Will Mr. Brown take the stand? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right this way, Brown. Uh, yeah, uh, excuse me just a second. Any of you gentlemen in the jury like to try a good cigar? Just happen to have 12 with me. <laughs> the defendant will take the stand. Uh, look, Your Honor. Your Honor, the fellow that took that money was supposed to whistle that song I'll get by all the time. Your Honor, I can't even whistle. Will you please confine yourself to answering the attorney's question? Uh, Will Mr. Massey please get on with the trial? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brown, this letter here, will you look at it and tell me if you recognize it as your handwriting? Oh, uh, yeah, I recognize it as my handwriting. Hey, wait a minute, where'd you get this letter? You wrote this letter not to the state's witness, Muriel Davis, but to another girl named Tootsie Madison. I will start from the beginning. Quote, dearest, darling, sweetest Tootsie. Oh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh... Your Honor, could I whisper something in your ear? Well, this is highly irregular. Uh, what is it? Oh, uh, what is that? <clears throat> if any of Mr. Brown's lady friends are in the courtroom, will they please leave? <laughs> you may proceed, counsel. Quote, dearest, darling, sweetest Tootsie, just a line to tell you that you is the only gal in the world for me. You see what I mean, Your Honor? I will continue reading. Quote, Angel Darling, I admit that we hasn't known each other very long, but in just them two nights I was up at your house for supper, you done cooked your way right into my heart. <laughs> Honey, that chicken casserole that you fixed was nothing short of true love with gravy on it. Uh, just a moment, uh, Mr. Brown, may I whisper something in your ear? Oh, yes, sir, Judge, yes, sir. Uh, by any chance, if there's... Uh, no, Your Honor. She got a job cooking for somebody already. <laughs> oh, the state will proceed. The letter continues, quote, And so, darling, I is asking you to be my lovely, beautiful wife and go down life's highway together in high gear with the brakes off. Unquote. <laughs> Gentlemen of the jury, did you hear that? Down life's highway together in high gear with the brakes off. Uh, Your Honor, but it ain't too late. I don't recognize that handwriting. I'm afraid it is a little late for that. Proceed. Continuing, quote, My only wish in life from now on is to love you, protect you, and take care of you financially for the rest of your days. I can hardly wait for your answer, sweetheart, so I enclose in an envelope addressed back to me. Give me your answer in the language of love. If it's yes, let me know by enclosing three dollars in the envelope. If it's no, make it a dollar and a half. <laughs> Gentlemen of the jury, the purpose of reading this letter was to show you that here again the defendant made an attempt to get money out of an innocent girl on promise of marriage to her. True, the sum was much smaller, but the defendant's effort was no less reprehensible. Yeah, uh, but wait a minute. Gentlemen of the jury, look at him up there. An unscrupulous cad, a vulture who preys on helpless women. Hey, just a minute, please. The I... man is only a charlatan. He's a lower type of criminal and a sneak thief. But honest, mister, I He's didn't... nothing but a low, cheap, contemptible crook. Your Honor, is I allowed to sue the prosecutor? <laughs> You're out of order. Yeah, I'll say I is. <laughs> All right, Brown, you may step down. Yes, sir. Yes. And so, gentlemen of the jury, I have proved beyond a shadow of doubt that Andrew H. Brown was the man who swindled Muriel Davis out of $1,500.
I am acting not only as a servant of the state. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant, Andrew H. Brown, guilty as charged. O'Brien, put this prisoner in cell 24. The name is Andrew Brown. Andrew Brown. Mm, yes. That big guy is me eyes deceiving me. What's the matter, O'Brien? Well, this morning I locked up them two fellas, you know, Joe and Frank. Uh, they picked him up for that grocery store job they pulled a couple of months ago. And Brown here is a dead ringer for Joe. You can't tell him apart. Well, put him away. I've got work to do. All right. Come on, Brown. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They put you in a cell right across the way from this fella Joe and his pal Frank. And when you see Joe, you think you're looking at yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here we are. Uh, in with you. That's Joe over there. You see, he wasn't kidding. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Say, buddy, you do look exactly like me, don't you? Yeah. Funny, ain't it? <laughs> and wait a minute. Ain't you, Frank, the fellow that was supposed to write that article about me? Hiya, pal. What did they bring you here for? Oh, they got us in here on some grocery store wrap, but we'll beat it. Yeah. So funny how much me and your pal Joe look alike, ain't it? You know, they got me in here on the wraps, too. They think I done swindle some gal, but I is innocent. Yeah? The only way I can figure it is that it must have been some other fella that she thunk with me. I is in a mess, all right. Well, drop it. We ain't interested. If I could only figure out how the whole thing happened. Oh, me. Well, I guess I might as well try to get some sleep on this cot here. Get the thing off my mind. Is you got a whistle, mister. I'm going to try to get some sleep. Listen, bud, you don't own the joint. Well, it's just that I'm trying to... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can whistle, mister. Yeah, go on whistling. Yeah, whistle, will you? Whistle. Whistle, you rotten bum. As I was saying, Mr. Brown, Joe has confessed and is in jail. I'm sorry about the whole thing. Yeah, yes, sir, Mr. Master. Yes, sir. Thank you. I, it sure was lucky that I recognized that song he was whistling. Here's your $1,500, Miss Davis. We found it all on this fella, Joe. Oh, thank you, Mr. Massey. Mr. Brown, this whole thing ought to be a lesson even for you. That business of proposing to women and getting money from them is bad medicine. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Massey. Don't worry. Ain't nobody going to have no more trouble with me about women with money. No, sir. I as a reformed man. I hope so. Good luck to both of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Come on, Muriel. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Massey. Goodbye, folks. Well, that's that, Andy. Mm. Wait a minute. I'll put this money in my bag. Yeah, uh, tell me, uh, you got the whole $1,500 there? Yes, I guess it's all here. Say, honey. Yes? How about me and you going down life's highway together in high gear with the brakes off? <laughs> Well, folks, we just want to thank you for being with us tonight. Yeah, and we hope you enjoyed the show. Say, Andy, I don't know whether I ought to tell you this or not, but on next week's program, you is going to meet five gals all within a couple of days. Five? Oh, boy, I can hardly wait. You might even marry one of them. Now you had to go and spoil everything. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>